Oh yeah, I've got a breakdown of some breakdancing from uh, Blender here on the left into DaVinci Resolve. So uh, I'm going to show you what you can do to improve your 3D renders in Blender and make them completely different in uh, by using compositing in DaVinci Resolve. It's pretty, pretty powerful stuff you can do with that. So I've got the scene here. Um, it's pretty straightforward. Uh, we've got geometry nodes, which are doing some stuff. <laughs> Point distribution, uh, randomizing the rotation. Uh, the um, geometry nodes are attached to a character mesh, which is just some random character that I bound to a Mixamo skeleton armature uh, and des massively decimated it and then attach the geometry nodes uh, to it, then obviously you can get to here. Um, the scale is quite interesting. You can do some interesting things with that. Um, I wish I'd uh, scaled this down to zero and then animated it up to one just as the camera was panning up to, to when the character was visible. But you know, you live, you learn. Do that on the next one. Um, the point instances are being created with this dancer particles node, which is these icospheres over here. And that's pretty much it for the geometry nodes. The grass is uh, hair, particle hair settings. Um, hair dynamics is turned on. And there is On the character, there we go, you can see it here. If we change it over to wireframe. On the character, I've appended um, some collision uh, meshes here. So they interact with the grass to give it a bit of a little bit of movement. Just uh, adds a little tiny bit of extra detail. And oh, the icosphere is also, by the way, I have attached a different color, red, green, blue, to each one of these so that when they get uh, created on the mesh, there's a, a random color. So it just adds a bit of randomness to the color of the points on the character. So that's that for the scene setup. Um, rendering up 1920, open EXR, uh, half float to reduce file size, DWA, DWA again to reduce the file size for, I'm rendering with EV and for the render passes, I am using combined Z, mist, normal, diffuse, specular, volume, other, bloom, and object. In this project, I haven't used um, the object cryptomat or the Z or the mist, but I, I will, I'll do something in the future that shows how you can use these because one, you can render these Z, Z and mist passes out to, to be able to render out depth and then control that with way more, have way more control over over the depth of the scene. Uh, so like mist, um, it's really useful for landscapes um, in particular. Um, so you have way more control of, over, over it in post in, in DaVinci Resolve if you render out your Z and your mist in separate layers. Uh, and the object, I'll, I'll briefly cover that in, in a minute, but um, yeah, that's also a whole other level of power that you've got to uh, modify your 3D scenes. Yeah, so once you've got those rendered out, the each file frame was about two megabytes um, in size. Go over to your DaVinci Resolve, drag them into this section over here, and then drag the files in that you want to use into here. Here's your and your you know grab whatever music files you want as well. Go into your cut page, make any cuts that you want, uh, or go into the the edit page. Um, I typically come in here first, um, and you, you can use this to um, make any cuts that you want to do to your footage. Um, I'm not going to go over the tools here. There's plenty of DaVinci Resolve tutorials for that. Um, so. 
Yeah, um, the audio here is CCO um, copyright free. And I started out by first of all, dragging in effects. So if you go over to your effects library, you can have a look at all the, is it, they give you a little preview, which is phenomenal about, about how the effects will look. And then when you want one, you just drag it in on top of the, um, the clip that you want to use. So in my case, I have used, I can't even remember what I used now, um, zoom blur, film grain, which you can, you won't be able to see this on YouTube probably, um, and lens reflections as well. So if I turn that off, you can see what that does. Zoom blur, boom, boom, boom. Um, the only other extra thing that I did was a camera shake because there's this section here where he does a backflip. Um, yeah, he does a backflip there. So it, at that point there, there is a camera shake. So the way that I've done that is I've cut the the clip into two, into you know in half here, and then add the camera shake only to this one here. So it just adds a bit more dynamic movement to the camera, makes it a bit more interesting. And I've manually keyframed the bloom layer, which, uh, well, let's have a look at it now. So on, uh, on uh, each one of these, or you can, before you do your cut, you can grab your file and then composite your layers together, which is what, what I've done here, um, and then do your cuts afterwards. So the way that you do that is you right click and open in Fusion page. This might break the audio on my recording, but let's see. Um, yeah, so the, the so the lighting, the, 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 the flares of light that you see there, I'm doing that on this section here. So you can see here that there's a keyframe icon that, that denotes that there's keyframes and you can see the keyframes here. What I've done is I've adjusted the gain whenever there's a spike in the audio, uh, wherever there's like some, some music popping in. You can jump to keyframes forward by pressing forward and you can go back. And once you've created your first keyframe, the, the, if, unless you've changed your settings, DaVinci will auto keyframe any changes that you make here. So um, that's how that works. Um, if I split this viewer into two, I can, I've got the media out here and I've got my first media in here. So if I create that, if I, if I tap one on the keyboard there, uh, or two loaded in on the right, then we can see what the media file is here. So to add in new media files, you, you add, you do shift, uh, spacebar which will then give you this menu to, to search for and you can select media in and add in a new media file which will be whatever you right clicked here it, it'll be whatever you right clicked here so if we go back into to fusion or just if i just click on this one here um yeah so you can add in new nodes doing that or you can drag in nodes like this. I, I also like to set arrange tools to grid because that way it snaps nicely and your nodes your nodes just look a bit neater. It's a bit more organized. So um, this is the background environment uh, view layer environment which you can see is the same it, it, it would be great if uh, Blender could uh, name everything uh, the same here as what the file, as what the EXR file outputs. That'd be quite cool. So we've got the environment background here, which is being blurred. If I press one on that one, I'm, I've added in some slight blur by just dragging in a, a, a node here. You can also shift drag to drag in a node into uh, into uh, uh, one of these lines here, 
or shift drag to remove it. It's a bit, bit annoying to do it when you've got grid mode enabled. If you take grid mode off, it works a bit better, but anyway. Um, the yellow arrow uh, is the background. Uh, well, that's just an, an input, but the merge layer, when you're adding it in, it'll, it'll show you that the yellow arrow is the background. The green arrow is the foreground. So you can hover over it and see. And the blue arrow is a mask. So that you can use to, um, how do we explain this? I'll cover this in a bit more detail at some point in the future, but if you have a crypto map and you add in a chroma key, there's various different chroma keys that you can use for various different things. You can do luminescent chroma keying and various other things. So what you can do is you can use that or you can use masks to select very specific objects in your scene based on obviously the color that they're represented by. So it's pretty awesome. Um, you can individually color key, individually blur, individually add grain, individually add effects. There's all sorts of interesting things that you can do with um, with the masks using the media crypto object. Very, very cool. But that's another one for another day. Um, see what we've got here I've got gloss direct that's being merged in here normal over blend so you, you can see just how much control you have over things if I if I have a look at the merge here for the uh, the glow bloom that's the bloom if I, go, if I have a look at the merge you can see if I pump the pump it all the way up and see what, what a difference it makes and you can obviously key any of these values which is freaking amazing um, the rest of these are pretty standard I've got gloss direct merging in using exclusion ambient occlusion is being multiplied in that's pretty typical uh, in uh, affinity photo or affinity designer or whatever whatever paint package you're using um, what's this one? Shadow, shadows being overlaid over the top, and you can do things like blur. You can add a, you can add a blur node in here. You can add a contrast node in here. Oh, you've you've got ridiculous amounts of, of control. It's pretty cool. Uh, emit. Um, it's being merged in here. Pretty standard. I've just adjusted the gain a little bit for some reason. Doesn't seem to be doing much at all. Oh, there is a slight change. It's not very, not very notice noticeable. Um, that then gets pumped into the OCIO color space, which I talked about in the previous video. Go and check that out if you uh, want to understand more about that. But effectively, it's just. Uh, in fact, I'll just cover it now. So. In your Blender files, um, I've got. I'm actually rendering a 2.93, but I'm using the 2.92 config.ocio file. I don't think it makes any difference. Uh, there may have been updates, but I haven't noticed anything in the um, Blender Blender Monday uh, videos that Pablo does. Um, but um, yeah, you grab the config.ocio file and set your source space to whatever the settings are that you've rendered with in Blender. Uh, you can change these, it's up to you uh, if you want to mix up the, the way that it looks. Um, it's in the color management section here. So if you, if you render out with Filmic Log, then you may or may not want to choose Filmic Log here, but it's up to you. you know, it, the, uh, the other thing to keep in mind is that the, uh, the, the the standard or the correct or the industry way of re of combining passes is like is, is done like this? So this is cycles. This is EV. Um, I'll put the link in the in the in the description. So the way that it works is that if you see here where there's a plus or a multiply, you're adding diffuse to indirect, and then you're multiplying these by the diffuse color. So if you just replace these with 
the nodes here, uh, the merge nodes, instead of doing uh, normal, you would choose multiply, or you would add to it by using one of the other options, for example. Um, and the important thing to remember is that these are just a guide. So you, you can do whatever you want. You can create some very interesting and very unique looks by duplicating um, things and then messing with them. Uh, take the shadow pass and then blur it and add it in on top of the, the existing shadow pass that you have. There's, there's so many things that you can do. It's really, really, yeah, it's really, really limit, limitless with the, the, the amount of things that you can do to change the color. So, um, yeah, I mean, if I take that out, you can see the difference that it makes as well. So I, uh, you can shift drag to, to remove things if I shift drag and put that back in again. That's what that OCIO color space node is doing. Uh, man, I, I was so happy when I figured out that one. <laughs> um, brightness contrast, again, pretty standard. Just, just grabbed one of the nodes here because I wanted to adjust the brightness and the contrast. That goes to the media out. Um, and that's that's pretty much it, job done. So then you can go into your color space and do color corrections. Um, you can do uh, global color corrections by dragging this wheel to change all the values. Or, or you can adjust individual ones by manually dragging, manually dragging these settings around or dragging this around. So you have ridiculous amounts of control over the color uh, the, and the look of the um, of, of your footage uh, of your 3d render so um, so yeah that's it um, I hope that was a bit more uh, a bit more info I, I think the last video I, I, I kept it really super brief and I'm gonna try and keep things as, as brief and as quick as possible I'm not uh, I'm not gonna do videos that talk you through everything step by step but hopefully um hopefully that is enough to give you an idea of some of the cool things you can do in davinci um this is studio as well by the way so I've, this is a this is a paid for one uh license that i have but the free version has i don't know i'm not sure if it has everything that you need but it has a lot of different um things that you can do so um, it's worthwhile checking out if you haven't uh, haven't already checked out DaVinci DaVinci Resolve. Um, I've I've played around with Blender's compositing a little bit, but I, I just find it a, a little bit slow at the moment. Um, I know there's loads of updates that have been happening, um, so I'll I'll definitely go back and check it out again um, sometime soon. I think. Um, but in the meantime, you know, I I do I just enjoy DaVinci, and um, yeah, I, hopefully this is uh, this is useful to somebody. Cheers.